Oh my word, that thing is super bright. Hey folks, and welcome back to part two of getting these Larry lights hooked up to old Blackjack here. So in the previous video of getting these lights installed on Blackjack, I will leave that link right up here. Stop looking at my face. I made reference to the Larry light. And for those of you who didn't catch on to the first time I had mentioned it, a Larry light makes reference to LED lights on cars and trucks that are you know made for off-road use such as these and this light bar that we're going to be installing here tonight the reason why i've coined them larry lights because everybody knows who larry the cable guy is and well what larry the cable guy is he's a redneck a hillbilly so anytime i see a chevy cavalier or a hyundai accent or whatever an old beat up ford truck whatever it is rolling through town and he's got more money in lights than he does on safety repairs on the vehicle. Uh, my wife and I make reference to those as Larry lights. So that's what we're going to be installing. We're going to be finishing up with the light bar. I've got a neat little setup here that we're going to be installing tonight. We're going to get it wired up and hopefully by the end of this video, we will be able to flip the switch and have power to these lights. But before that, let's talk a brief second about the elephant in the room and that is my lack of manhood you guys have all known me ever since I started this YouTube channel to have a beard and you know even my little channel logo which I think is right down here for you guys has OCG in the beard and well as part of maybe a little bit of a publicity stunt for the channel to see if I could gain some views I decided to shave my beard off and uh, I did that in a video that I premiered earlier this week and I again I will put that one up here so you guys can take a look uh, and that video so far is doing very very well I have not been like this for many many years and if you look really really close you'll see stubble and that stubble is precisely uh, 36 hours old from the time that I shaved my beard and then clean shaven my face this is 36 hours into my next beard and if you are a beard company and you are looking to support my new beard growth please hit me up on Instagram or Facebook I'd be glad to try and get this thing growing a little bit quicker anyways let's get back to the video guys and see what we're got see what we're got see what we've got installed not even installed I can't talk tonight either let's it's the beard or lack thereof let's see what we've got to install the light bar up on this basket so what I've got here is a little aluminum bracket uh, where the light mounts right here and then you've got three different size rubber bushings that fit inside and one of the neat things that I think that this setup has is that it's got like teeth grooved into the inside of the bracket as well as the back side of the bushing. The reason for that is if you're mounting on a round surface, especially off-road vehicles that take a pound them, you're going to get a lot of jarring of vibrations and you don't want those lights aiming down eventually. So the bracket is made so that they're kind of corrugated to grip on the inside and because they're grooved on the back side of that as well they're not going to spin within the housing that is a genius idea so these are just a cheap chinese no-name brand that i got off of amazon but i will leave the link in the description box below if you guys think that you could use one of these brackets anyways let's put it together and show you where we're going to mount it and how it's going to mount on top of this basket so basically we've got our LED bar here and uh, I've got the brackets kind of loosely mounted on there. Once we get these mounted up on the bars, which we're going to do here in a second, I can then mount that to there and then we can angle or align our light bar to the position that we want it to. 
and uh, we don't have to adjust these. We can kind of set these level, and then these obviously have the brackets on them, the same as the rock lights and the backup lights that we installed last time. So what we've got to do first is we've got to find out which bushing is going to fit best on the uh, bar that we're going to mount it to, and then get this tightened up, get the light bar mounted to the bracket, and then we can start our wiring because the wiring is all ready to go on the other four lights. So let's get to it. Okay guys, so we did struggle a little bit with getting these put into place with finding the right bushing to fit these roughly one inch uh, tubes. Um, even though the, the bushing that had the smaller hole in it was a one inch tube, it spread the two brackets out too far that I couldn't get the bolts to uh, line in there. Now if I had longer fine thread bolts, I probably could have made it work. But they're a hex head, they've got to fit in there, and I didn't have anything. So I think we're going to be able to make this work. I've got them up there. They're pretty secure. That's fine. It'll be all right. So now what we've got to do is we've got to get them mounted this way into their perspective holes, get the nuts and bolts on it, and uh, tighten her up. And that way we can start aligning it and then getting it wired up. So if you want the beam, to go right in the truck driver's face. Sorry, Dave, sorry, Jeff. Uh, we can aim it up a little bit higher. Or if we get some smart Alec that doesn't want to shut his high beams off, we can just give him the old flicky flicky. So we've got that up there right now. I think she's pretty well mounted. I think it's gonna be quite secure. So it's time to start getting things wired up with, this, with the uh, light bar as well as our rock lights over here and our backwards facing lights on the rear. So I've got the overhead console down and it's actually pretty easy to remove. There's two screws that hold it in place on this longer console on the Ultimate and then there's one in the front. So if you've got the shorter console, you've got the one in the front and then everything is just kind of clipped in there. And as you can see, there's a bunch of these little clips all the way around. So all you've got to do is kind of get your fingers up underneath of it, either with a screwdriver and pry it down a little bit. Anyways, those will just pop right out of that little bracket the whole way around. And then you've got your electrical plug in here for your lights and your little computer. So this piece here appears to be attached to the actual headliner. So we're not going to be able to remove that. But one of the things that we are going to do is we're going to be able to just kind of cut our hole or drill our hole with a hole saw and gain access to that exterior panel, the actual metal of the roof. So I've got a hole saw, we're going to cut that out and then we're going to get access to the uh, inside of the roof. So let's do that. So I don't have a clue where my new Diablo hole draw, hole draw, hole saw kit went. Um, I won it on an Instagram contest one time and uh, I've used it two or three times and it's a great kit very uh, universal and uh, it's got the quick latch system so you can kind of pull different sizes in and out of it anyways we found this old one not sure what it's for but we're going to start cutting a hole and uh, getting our access up through the ceiling we've already got our pilot hole started so we're just going to make a mess now Now we do have a nice clean hole here. Uh, we've got our pilot hole drilled which went right through the roof and uh, now from the top side we'll be able to see exactly where our hole is about to begin. So let's go up there and take a look. So we've got our access hole here. We are going to make that hole a little bit bigger. We'll probably put another one beside it so we'll have power coming in, power going out. And then we can take our rooftop and scribe around it so we know exactly where everything's going. So once we get our other holes drilled, we'll have this piece kind of sitting over top of everything. We'll seal it all down with our lines going in and out. Then we can have access to be able to start plug it in and wiring up some of these to power. Before the end of the night, we're gonna have these things lit up. So I'm gonna make those holes bigger. We'll get our wires run and we'll start connecting some of these lights. All right guys, just one little word to the wise. When you're buying these switches and lights and all that stuff, don't buy the Chinese stuff. It's crap. Let me show you why. So I had to unplug all the wires 
so that I can get the switches mounted on this plate. Well, when I started pulling things apart, all the wires started pulling off the connectors. The connectors then started pulling off the spade bits that stick out of the back of the light. And there's a good example of a switch that's supposed to have five spade connectors sticking out of it and there's only two left because they all pulled out with the wires and the wires fell apart. So what I had to do is rewire everything and I've got all new connectors, new wire and uh, I didn't have any red wire so I had to use blue and uh, so we've got our ground and our live. So now we're going to take our ground and our live, we're going to connect that light and this light together and run a lead over to the hole that we drilled. Then we'll run a positive and negative from that light and this light into that hole and then of course we've got our light bar. We're going to have three wires going in and dangling down through this hole that we drilled and then we'll get our supply wire all the way from the battery which is fused, relayed, it's going to go up inside that hole and power up the switches so that when we knock on those switches all the lights will come on. So it's getting on about a uh, quarter after eight here. I got about 45 minutes left before I'm done for the night. So let's see if we can't get all of the wires pulled together and snake down through that hole and get the hole sealed up so that tomorrow when we come in, we can finish this up and all of our wiring will be done on the inside of the car and running out to the battery. So let's get this done. All right, so it's almost nine o'clock and believe it or not, I didn't get very far with the wiring because well, it's tedious and it takes some time. So. so let's show you where we got. I've got this light wired up. I've got it in some wire loom. And the loom is run all the way across here. It connects this light. And then we've got it kind of wired up. And basically kind of terminating at the end of the loom that we will end up poking down through the ceiling or the roof here before or once we uh, run it through this piece here. So that again is going to get mounted to the roof over top of our holes that I have the grommets in. We're going to run the wire from that light and this light in together through those holes and then we'll take our light bar and wire it down there as well. So you're probably asking yourselves why did he use green zip ties on a black on black. Well, you know what? I'm kind of asking myself the same thing. Seeing how I don't have any black zip ties, believe it or not, I've got white, yellow, red, pink. Yes, pink. I don't know why we have pink uh, and green. So uh, I chose to go with green because it is the darkest and quite frankly, my dear, I don't give a darn. So that's going to do it for right now. Uh, when we pick back up in uh, just a few seconds for you guys, it'll be probably either Wednesday night or Thursday night for me, we will uh, get all that wire run inside the cabin and uh, get the power from the battery and start lighting things up. So stick with us. I'll be right back. Okay, so it's uh, Wednesday in the middle of the day. Things are pretty quiet here around the shop, so I've been just kind of tinkering away at this a little bit. We've got the rear lights all wired up and coming into the middle here. And we've got these two end lights wired up and again, running into the middle. So we're getting ready to get an extended wire, which we I guess we already have on the light bar. Getting it run through our little thing here and then down into the inside of the car. So I got some fuse holders and this relay that we're going to start wiring up from the battery into the inside of the car. So uh, that's what we're going to be working on right now. Okay, so we've finished everything up and we're getting ready to take it outside and light the backyard up. As you can see, everything is mounted. All the wires are completely wired up and I've got a block of wood kind of pressing down on that roof mount just to help keep it sealed uh, for a day or two or not for a day or two at least till it dries and uh, we've got everything kind of all secure
And if we go inside here, you'll notice that we've got our light switches up here, but we've only got one of them working. And what I ended up doing was I ended up doing uh, running everything off of one relay so that when I flick the switch they all light up like it's Christmas so let's get this thing backed outside we'll take it down back in the field where there is no light and we'll crank these suckers on so we're out back of the shop here now and it has started to rain so I'm gonna do my very best to show you guys how well these lights light up 360 all the way around the car so let's take a look So there's not too many places I can stand and not get blinded by this light, but man, those are some friggin' bright lights. Just look all the way around us here. Now this side light seems to be pointing down a little bit. I may lift that up some. And as we come around back, who needs backup lights when you've got those suckers? Oh my word, that thing is super bright. So guys, I, as I stand out here in the mist, if you haven't already, I would encourage you to go down and hit that subscribe button on our quest to 10,000 subscribers. And we're on a race. Now, if you guys haven't heard of Revstoration, my buddy, Pastor Dave, has a channel over here and uh, he is basically neck and neck with me at 5,000 or 5,100, we're at 52 now, uh, 100 subscribers, and I've challenged them to a race to 10K. So if you haven't done so, now's the time to get me to 10,000 subscribers so that we can beat Pastor Dave. Also, go over there and hit him up because it's a friendly battle and I'd like to see him grow. So go on over there, check his channel out and throw him a subscribe as well. You're gonna like what he's doing with the revivals. Him and his dad have got a whole yard full of cars that they're going to get running so he's also got a project truck of his own called Putin it's an old I think it's a 68 Ford uh, F100 and it is a uh, bump side so go over there check them out it's a really cool channel real fun to watch and uh, in the meantime we're gonna try and do our very best to get to 10,000 subscribers before he does and you guys know how to do it having said that guys stay focused on the windshield not the rearview mirror I love you God bless Let's do it again real soon.